If you've had to authenticate to devices and resources over the web, you've probably provided a username and password for one website, and then a different username and password for another website, and then a different username and password for a third website, and so on and so on. Well, that becomes pretty tedious, and that's one of the reasons that Kerberos was created. Kerberos is a standard method of authenticating someone onto the network or onto different resources. It provides you with a way to authenticate one time and have access to all of the resources that are appropriate for you. There is no need to re-authenticate every time you touch a different web server, every time you want to log into a file server, anytime you want to transfer files. You provide with one central login, and you're done. This is something also that's well protected cryptographically. There is a mutual authentication that takes place. The client and server know that there's no man in the middle. You can be assured that when you're logging in via Kerberos, that the server really did receive your original packets, and you really did receive the original packet that the server sent. This is a standard that's been around for a long time, since the 1980s. It was created at MIT, and there's an RFC for it, RFC 4120. Microsoft has been using Kerberos as its method to authenticate since Windows 2000. So if you have any time in the recent past logged into a Windows domain, it is Kerberos that has gone back and forth between your workstation and the domain controller and some other devices to make sure that you could authenticate properly into the Windows domain. Kerberos, of course, though, is a standard. So although many people are using Kerberos in their Windows environments, you could use Kerberos to authenticate anywhere you might need that capability. The name Kerberos comes from Greek mythology. The word Kerberos, or Cerberus, is the three-headed dog of the underworld. It prevented people from escaping across the River Styx. It was the guardian. And it had three heads, and those three heads are pretty important when we start looking at the Kerberos protocol itself. One of those heads is the key distribution center, the KDC. This is what is going to make sure that you are who you say you are, you're providing the right login credentials, and you'll usually see this running on TCP port 88 or UDP port 88. One of the other heads is called the authentication service. This is the service that actually does the authentication onto the network. The third head is called the ticket granting service. You're going to find that in Kerberos, there are a lot of tickets that go back and forth. And it's this ticket granting service that ultimately provides you with the ability to go to any resource out there on the network and gain access to the ones that you need. Let's step through a process where we will use Kerberos to authenticate and gain access to this application server. I'm on this workstation, and I would like to log into the network. So I need to talk to the authentication service. And I'm going to send them a login request. What I'm going to do is take the date and the time from my computer, and I'm going to encrypt that date and time. And the key that I'm going to use to encrypt it is my password hash. So I'm not actually sending the password hash across the network. I'm using the password hash as a key that I'm going to use to encrypt the date and time. The date and the time become very important in Kerberos. You have to make sure that everybody's clocks are well synchronized or you're going to have problems when you try to authenticate to the authentication server. So once you send that up to that authentication service, the authentication service then receives that information. And then it starts looking at what you've sent it and confirming that it can decrypt it because, of course, you encrypt it with the hash that the authentication service also has. And it provides a ticket granting ticket back to you. This has a client name, your IP address, a timestamp, and an amount of time where that ticket granting ticket will be valid. The default is 10 hours. And after 10 hours, this ticket is going to be no good. You're going to have to get another ticket at that time. This is also encrypted with the KDCs, the Key Distribution Center's special private key. So this can't be decrypted by anyone else. You're going to find out why that's important in just a moment. You're also going to receive a session key. This is the ticket granting service session key. And this is a key that you're going to use for encryption between the ticket granting service and the user. And it's encrypted with your password hash, so you will be able to decrypt that piece of it. Now that you have a ticket that allows you to get access to resources, you'll send that ticket 
and the name of the application server or the resource you'd like to have access to up to the ticket granting service. You say, please, may I have access to that server? This particular request is timestamped with the client ID, and you've encrypted with the TGS session key. So again, we're doing a lot of encryption so that nobody can sit between this and spoof these requests that are being made. You're going to get a response back, and this particular response is going to have a session key that you're going to use with that application server. Ultimately, it's encrypted with the ticket granting services session key. And then you're getting a service ticket that has your user information. There is service session key information in there. And you're encrypting it with the application server's secret key. So at this point, you have a lot of encrypted data that you can't even understand. You can't read it. You're just going to pass it along now to the application server. And hopefully, the application server will be able to decrypt it because all of the keys are synchronized on the ticket granting service. So you'll send off that information to the application server. Please may I have access. Here is my encrypted service ticket that is encrypted with your application server name. And you've got the private key. You're the only one who can really decrypt this. I'd like to gain access, please. And you're also going to send a time-stamped authenticator that you've now encrypted with the service session key that you received. Once the application server has received this information, it begins to decrypt the data that you have sent to confirm that that message wasn't changed in any way along the line. It then decrypts the authenticator with that service session key. And now you're able to perhaps even get another response back from the server with one final check to make sure that there's no man in the middle. That is an optional step. It's not done all the time. But it's something, especially in very secure environments, may be required to be assured there's no man in the middle. And at that point, Point, you've got access. It seems that this is a very complex process just to gain access to a resource, and it is. But all of this fortunately happens under the covers. You don't see any of this occurring. All you're doing is providing a username and a password or any other type of authentication functionality. And from that point on, Kerberos handles everything behind the scenes. It also makes sure, especially in very secure environments, that nobody's sitting in the middle or spoofing any of this information so that you can be assured that when you gain access to that resource that it's really the right people gaining that access and not somebody sitting in the middle. That cryptographic function that takes place assures that Kerberos is a very secure authentication method for us to use.